In this video class, you will learn how to implement ribbons in your application created by the Monta ribbons. Well, to make the study easier, I made available at my site a small sample application that will be used as the basis for the implementation of the ribbons created here. This example is composed of three simple forms that simulate the register of a customer, a register of suppliers, and a display of information about the application. There are also some reports. At the end of this video class, you will realize the importance of understanding about ribbons that provide to the application appearance, safety, and excellent internet navigation. We will begin here by the option New Ribbon. But to spend less time, I have done a pre-assembly of the ribbon for the project. Everything that's here was seen in the first class. There are the divisions of groups, the tab, and the inclusion of buttons. Note that when you click the button, it runs a procedure done by me that returns the message box, forming the ID of the button clicked. The functionality of the button is given by the attribute onAction that can be called by a VBA function or by a macro. Here's the attribute onAction of the button. Look, I call here the function fncOnAction that I created in Monta Ribbons and that will be exported to your application along with the ribbon created. So, do not change for now the name of this function. Here is the attribute on action into the calculator button. Another novelty refers to this control, that when you click the arrow, it opens a menu list. This control is the split button. Let's see its structure. Know that it's composed of an assembly with more than one control. It's used the control menu and the control button to compose the structure. We have the button above the layer menu that is what is seen on the external display of the control split button. It's optional and if you do not use it, the split button assumes the first button of the list of menu as the display button and external use of the menu. As an alternative for their assembly, we can use only the control menu with the buttons. The difference is that I don't get the external buttons as the at split button, but with a figure associated to open the menu list, as we will see soon. Let's start the assembly with the control menu that will contain the buttons to open the customer registries and register of suppliers of the sample application. We will now know the control menu. We choose the ID, image and label. Ready. Only this. Let's now configure this. The ID, we give a name to it, MN Registries. Label, let's call it General. And let's select an image to the menu. Ready, the structure is done. Now let's paste it inside the group registries. Paste F5. See, it has this look of disabled because the buttons are missing. Let's configure there the first button of our menu, which is the button that will open up the customer's registry. Don't forget here 
the on action attribute to give functionality to the button. ID BT customers. Label customers. Now an image. Past. Well, where is this button now? It's in the menu structure. Let's search inside the menu structure. Past F5 to refresh. Rary, our first item in the menu list. The next item is the button suppliers. Label suppliers. Here we will use the same picture, OK? Then we copy it down the button clients inside the menu structure. Copying F5 to refresh. See the list ready. Note that by clicking on the image, it opens the menu, unlike the control split button. If I click on the image, in fact, I'm clicking the button. See here. Remember that this button may be an independent button or belong to the list of menu. If I do not create the independent button, it assumes the first button of the menu list. Let's come back here for our menu control. Let's add some attributes. Well, I want to increase the size of the image of my menu. Then size, large, F5, done, increased. Well, if you have a small list and also want to increase the size of this list, images, etc., you have an attribute in the menu called item size. You can increase there as well. We will use here the large to increase the size of the images of the internal buttons of the menu. See? The other option here is to add the control split button. Clicking on split button, you have your attributes and structure pre-assembled with the control menu. With the menu structure already assembled, let's set the split menu control right in the XML and involve this menu. Split button. Be very careful when filling the controls in relation to the names so you won't make any mistake. Note that button is written here in capital letter. I'm adding the ID, which is always necessary to the controls. ID SPT registries. OK. Now I close the split button below the menu control. And this way I created the structure split button that consists of menu and button. And we have shown in the image. Well, in this structure, the attribute size is to be controlled by the control split button and no longer by the menu. Let's see the error when we leave the size here. Note in the message that it gives a good tip. The size attribute of the menu element is not defined in this scheme. So we need to get out this attribute size that will be controlled by the split button. F5. Oh. 
OK. Now we have the control split button that has the external button and the menu list. We will then increase the image using the attribute size of the control split button. Large, F5, done. The split button in this case is assuming the first button of the menu list, but we could add a button here, above the layer menu, regardless of the list. Add some after so you can train. To complete the assembly of the ribbon, we will add a button in the diverse group that will call for a site, for example. It's because I want to show you an attribute often used that will allow us great mobility in the project, which is the tag. Let's start the assembly of the button. ID, image, label, size, and the tag that I want to present. And don't forget the on action to give functionality to the button. The function fmc on action allows us to read both the ID and the value of the tag. The ID is already programmed to identify the button clicked, and the attribute tag can be used to store a value. We use this value in the function to open the site. You see how this is possible. Let's add here the full address of my site. HTTP www.usandoaccess.com.br Let's copy and paste it into the miscellaneous group. Miscellaneous. Here, I'll paste it before the log off button. Ctrl V, F5. Oops, I forgot the picture. Let me go there and pick one. Ctrl C. Let's put the image in the image MSO that I forgot. Alright, F5, done. OK. To make it more organized, we will use a vertical bar between the button Site and Log Off. It's created by the control separator. Very simple. We use just the ID. It's an ID for the separator. We copy and paste this control then between the button site and log off. It will create our vertical bar. Past a five done. Our task now is to export the ribbon for the example file. But before it, I want to show you a ribbon to be used with the reports. We will also export it to our example file. Click the button Export Ribbon. First, we must choose the ribbon to be exported. In this case, the ribbon lesson 2 and the ribbon print. 
The second step is to choose the place where the ribbons will be saved at the example file. Let's keep the standard that the system table uses ribbon. The third step is to find the example file that will receive the ribbons. If it has a password, it must be typed so multi ribbons can change the file. All the codes needed by the ribbons are exported too. At last, click Export. Done. Exportation done. OK. Now, we will open the example file, verify what was exported, and do the final setup so the ribbons can work correctly. Note that there were exported three code modes, which are exported just once for the application. To see the table uses ribbons, click with the right button at this control panel tab, select navigation option, and check show system object, and OK. Now we can see the table uses ribbons. Open the table and see the ribbons. Well, always that's necessary to change something at the ribbons. Don't do it here. Make changes at Monta ribbons and export it again. Ahead, we will refresh the ribbon and you will understand why. The Get Ribbon mode has codes for changing buttons at runtime, which we will we'll show you at other class. The Picture mode has codes that allow us to use external images at the ribbon, which the formats PNG and JPG that we'll show you also at another class. The ribbon mode has the main functions. Now, the function of our interest is the FNC on action. Here, we will set up the ribbons button functions. Before beginning the button setup, we will need to check if the reference Microsoft Office 12 object library is active because it's necessary for everything to work correctly. It's checked. OK. Note that the function has an argument named control. This argument has two attributes of the click it button, which are ID and tag. Remember that the attribute ID identifies exclusively a button. Because of this, we can get the click it button and set up the right command for it. Let's use the select case. The first button of a ribbon is the button clients. If the click it button is BT clients, we set up it to open the clients form. FRM clients. Next, if the click it button is the BT suppliers, we set up it to open the suppliers form. DOCMD open form FRM suppliers. If the button is BT Calculator, we set up it to open the calculator. And we use the command shell for it. 
the cow is calcs.exe. Next. If the button is BT site, we set up it to open the website. We will use the method follow hyperlink to open the website. Remember that I put the website name at the tag attribute of the site button? So, we just need to use the control tag that it has our website information. Next. If the button is BT Info, we set up it to open a form about. Do CMD. Open form. FRM about. And last, if the button is BT Exit, we set up it to close the program and access with the command quit. Do CMD quit save all. Now we go to debug compile so we know for sure that there are no syntax errors. The next step is to set up the main ribbon at the application start. Click at the Office button, Access Options, select Current Database, and choose here at the Ribbon Name box the ribbon that the access will open when the application starts. In our case, Lesson 2 is the main ribbon. OK. Access will warn you that this change will only be valid at the next opening of the application. Before reloading the application, let's set up the reports to open with the print ribbon. At the properties list, choose the tab Others. and see the option name of the ribbon. Choose the ribbon to be loaded with the report, in our case, RB Print. Remember you must set up all the reports this way. If you have ribbons made to open with forms, you must do the same way. After all the changes, we must test our project. Here is our main ribbon, loaded at Startup. Click the Clients button. Click the button Print. Note the Print button being loaded with the report. When we close the report, the ribbon is closed too, going back to the main ribbon. Clicking the button Suppliers. Now clicking the button Calculator. Clicking Website. That loads my website. The Info button. And now the exit button, closing the application. Now I want to show you some alternative programming options, which I believe are important for you to learn. Observe here at the function f and c on action that there are some simple form calls. Think that you have a ribbon that calls for 50 forms, 30 reports and 30 queries. This way we will have a lot of cases, right? To reduce this programming, I've made here a function f and c open object that can open forms, reports, 
and queries without any additional programming. Just tell the function the name of the object we want to load, the kind of object, and that's it. We will do it so you can understand it better. Let's get rid of the buttons that call forms that will now be called by the function fnc open object. Another way to start a button is to use macros. We can create a global macro and inside of it sub macros triggering the buttons. Look. The macro that triggers the client's button and this one that triggers the supplier's button. We will use them in practice. Let's go back to Monta Ribbons to make changes at the main ribbon and make it compatible with the new functions. Our first change is at the attribute on action at the button client. Instead of the function fnc on action, we would use fnc open object. That's written this way: equal fnc open object apostrophe of rm client apostrophe comma one. One tells the function that it's a form that must be open. F5. Let's test it. Observe the new kind of message Monta Ribbons indicates. The next button to be changed is the supplier's button. Here, at the attribute on action, we will use the macro call. We first indicate the global macro MCR ribbon. dot and now the sub macro that calls for the suppliers form that's m open form suppliers at last let's change the info button using on the action attribute the function fnc open object To call the function we use equal fnc open object apostrophe frm about comma one. One indicates that it must open a form. One more test with the buttons. Clients OK. Info button OK. When we are done making changes, we can export our ribbon. We select the ribbon Lesson 2. Select our example file. And click Export. Observe that Monta Ribbons detected that the ribbon Lesson 2 already exists at our example file. So, it will create a backup of the ribbon and now our new ribbon will take the place of the old one.
Let's open the UC's ribbon table and see the changes. Here is the old ribbon, renamed. That's why I've told you to make changes only at Monta Ribbon, because any changes made here are discarded at the backup ribbon. When everything's OK, you can discard this old ribbon. Let's check the changes at the client's button we've made at the XML. Here is the change made with the function open object. So everything's okay. Let's start the application and see the function FNC open object in the supplier's macro working. Client. Okay. The function FNC open object is working. Now opening suppliers that's triggered by the macro. OK, it's working. And the info button, also triggered by the function FNC open object. Let's put a breakpoint at the code so you can see the values going to the function FNC open object. Clicking here, you add a breakpoint to the code. Triggering the client's button, observe that the code stopped at the breakpoint. And now we can read what's being passed through the name object argument. So, with the mouse, you can see the name is FRM client. F5 to release the code. Now the info button. Again, we let the mouse over the name and see the name is OK. FRM about. F5 to release the code. Again, about button. F5 to release the code. About the supplier's button. It will be triggered by the macro. M open form suppliers. This one that's been triggered by the suppliers button. Thank you for watching this and see you.